welcome back. Welcome back to Corbett Report Radio. I'm your host, James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And if you're just joining us, we were just talking to Vincent Finelli of USAPrepares.com about the upcoming expo that he's going to be running this weekend in Missouri. So once again, if you're interested in that, USAPrepares.com, and you can email him uh, for free tickets if you're listening to this live. At any rate, we are now going to shift gears a little, but really on the very similar topics and we're going to st- start with our regular Thursday night guest James Evan Pilato of foodworldorder.com to go over all the latest in the world of food health and the environment so James thanks once again thanks so much for having me man it's it's always a pleasure and this yeah this is a lot easier uh, transition I think this week than perhaps out of the Oklahoma City coverage of last week but James let's let's get right into it and something you had sent me several days ago from a listener to the show who asked about fluoride alternatives in in toothpaste. Is that right? Yes, that's right. I don't have it up in front of me right now, so I can't quote verbatim, but basically the listener was uh, picking up from our talk last uh, last week on Food World Order about the uh, fluoride in tooth, toothpaste being a contributor, contributor to uh, declining IQs in children and other toxic ill health effects and basically the uh, the person was interested in in alternatives what can we use that isn't infested with this fluoride that's uh, that's not not good for us in any way i can basically give just a, a couple of examples and like so many things on this as as we say you know the revolution begins at home and and i think probably as your previous guest knows and can probably help everyone out with that you know this isn't going to happen overnight you're not going to flip a switch and and be off the grid and completely prepared it's an ongoing process and you're always learning you know new things i can just kind of give the example of what i use and and again james you gotta always give the disclaimer before i come on about you know the 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 views expressed here of media monarchy and you know again i'm not trying to say you endorse this or or that i use there's a company called now foods and they do a whole line of you know natural foods and supplements and vitamins and things but they've got a Zilla white, and it's basically a, a fluoride-free toothpaste that also has Zillatol, which is sort of like a, a sweetener and a white and a whitener. But when you look at it, one of the main ingredients is sodium bicarbonate. So my smart girlfriend, something she does a lot, you can just really use baking soda. You can use Absolutely, baking yeah. baking soda, and and if you can handle it, you can also do a, a little bit of. Uh, oh, now it escapes me. It's in the it's in the brown bottle, not alcohol, not rubbing alcohol, but uh, I would hope not. <laughs> I hope it's not vinegar as well. Oh, using baking soda. No, oh, I should I should have grabbed it out of the medicine cabinet. Now now the name escapes me. But you you can use baking soda you can also even mix in maybe a little cinnamon and and just something to make it maybe taste a a little better but that is unbelievably cheap so uh, as long as we're not too much cinnamon though no where that leads no 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 no. just just to kind (laughs) of just to kind of cut it just a little bit but the other thing and you know and it doesn't just come down to brushing but also flossing is important, and I'll use this opportunity if you'll indulge me. Again, my smart and talented girlfriend made a music video with a guy who does educational children's music, and it's called Philosophy 101, as in the philosophy of flossing. And it's at philosophy101.com, and it's basically a way to, you know, through a catchy song to kind of raise awareness about flossing. So... Not just brushing, brushing, but flossing is also important. So, hopefully, just maybe run a little search and maybe go on to your, you know, your local grocery store and start to drill them with questions about, you know, what toothpaste and do you have that doesn't have fluoride. That's the point, and I'm lucky enough once again to be in Japan, where uh, most of the toothpaste here does have some fluoride, but not anywhere near the levels in American uh, brands. Unless you actually buy the American brands here, which you can do, but uh, but it's not as much of an issue in the Japanese toothpaste. So, Japan once again quite a health conscious country in a lot of ways. Well, and that is the whole catch too, because they'll tell you, well, you know, you're you're not supposed to swallow it then why do they force it in our water if we're not supposed to swallow it? That's always the uh, the conundrum and paradox they can never quite explain their way out of. 
right? And if you swallow more than a pea-sized amount, call the doctor. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, no, no, no big deal. So, James, we can turn to all the latest news on foodworldorder.com, which, again, I, I've been given thanks to my man Adam in Nova Scotia for helping me you know, keep the site up to date and just jam-packed with information. We'll begin with one from the always valuable Cryptagon.com. Food stamp rolls increase 70% from 2007, projected to keep increasing until 2014. The Congressional Budget Office, that's the CBO, said on the 19th of April, that 45 million people in 2011 received Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program benefits, SNAP, a 70% increase from 2007. It said the number of people receiving the benefits, commonly known as food stamps, would continue growing until 2014. Spending for the program, not including administrative costs, rose, and yada, 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 but that main part makes me go, oh, okay, so it's going to go up until 2014? CBO said the number of people receiving benefits is expected to fall after 2014, James, because the co- the economy will be improving. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, yes. Oh, you've got to love it. I mean, it, it, laugh or cry, that those are your options. And if, if I can throw in one other personal note, and this is something I don't think I've really talked about all that much, but we have talked about how prevalent, you know, SNAP and food stamp things are here in Oregon. I've never been able to bring myself to get on it, even though I'm, we would probably totally, you know, meet the requirements to be able to get them. I've just never been able to do it when I know that, you know, yeah, I'm lucky I work at a, at a grocery store, so that gets me discounts on food, which is amazing. And I don't know, you know, my, my song might change if I didn't have the grocery store job. I might immediately say, oh, I need these benefits. But for, it's just always been that slippery slope for me. Absolutely. And I mean, that's something that we all have to think about in the various ways that, that we're uh, living our lives. To what extent we want to even, you know, take those handouts when they're available or, or you know, I mean, obviously there's a, so many questions so, along with that. But uh, mm-hmm. but obviously there are people out there who genuinely need them to live. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's because of the way the economy has been engineered and the, the state that we're living in. So... So I'm not here to blame the uh, the poor people for being poor and being in the system, but uh, but absolutely, it's not a it's not a win win situation for everyone. And the idea that it's the uh, the enrollment's going to fall in 2014 because the economy is just going to suddenly start skyrocketing is such just I mean garbage that. Again, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Well, we'll <laughs> for listeners out there, you know, make the note of that, and and if those you know rolls and dolls do fall in 2014, we'll we'll come back here and I won't say we'll eat our hat. I will, but <laughs> I, I will joyfully eat my hat if that's uh, if that is the case. Another story, James, as as I've said more and more and more often, it seems like we're living in the future, just from the Associated Press. FDA proposes rules for nanotechnology in food. Regulators are proposing that food companies that want to use tiny engineered particles in their packaging may have to provide extra testing data to show the products are safe. The Food and Drug Administration issued tentative guidelines last Friday for food and cosmetic companies interested in using nanoparticles, which are measured in billionths of a meter. Nanoscale materials are generally less than 100 nanometers in diameter. A sheet of paper, in comparison, is 100,000 nanometers thick. The sub-microscopic particles are increasingly showing up in FDA-regulated products like sunscreens, skin lotions, and glare-reducing eyeglass coatings. Some scientists believe the technology will one day be used in medicine, but the FDA's announcement did not address that use. The draft guidance suggests the FDA may require food companies to provide data establishing the safety of any packaging using nanotechnology. Under longstanding regulations, companies aren't required to seek regulatory approval before launching products containing established ingredients and materials, such as caffeine, spices, and various preservatives. But FDA officials said that foods and packaging containing nanoparticles may require more scrutiny. It's, I think in a way it almost reminds me of the drone stories that, you know, oh, uh, we have these things, I don't think, you know, we're really going to use them, and it's going to need a lot more approval, and then you read more headlines, and it's, just, uh, oh, no, they're here, and we're already using them. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm just being thick here or, or what, but I don't really understand what, 
nanotechnology in packaging is all about. Why are they stressing the packaging? That's I I have not figured that one out myself either. Bizarre. Yeah, I'm just looking at the uh, the actual guidelines that you linked up there in that post, and it's talking about improving the packaging of food or altering the look and feel of a cosmetic. So I don't really know what nanotechnology and packaging is all about, but uh, but certainly the idea that this is uh, becoming or going to be a part of the food supply itself and engineering the food at the, the sub submicroscopic level is, I think, one that should give us all a bit of pause for thought, to say the very least. Because all we have to do is, you know, remember the stories we mentioned last week about, you know, the the BPA. You know, oh, you know, it's okay for the packaging, but even though it's going to leak and leach into right, the right, food. Exactly. Yes, things that leach into the foods from the packaging, and we know how that works. But uh, but if the FDA says it's all right, I guess it's all okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, yeah, you know, we might just have robots, you know, and nano technology under under our skin a uh, bit of a change james chocolate titans in fresh antitrust lawsuit for alleged u.s price fixing this from confectionarynews.com awg the associated wholesale grocer a retailer owned cooperative that supplies retail member stores brought the action in the district court of kansas through a law firm against Hershey and the rest defendants in an ongoing class action lawsuit in Pennsylvania federal court, which consolidates around 80 separate cases alleging price fixing. AWG alleges that Hershey, Nestle, Mars, and Cadbury worked together to artificially rise the price of chocolate on three occasions between 2002 and 2008 as growth slowed in the U.S. market. There's a couple interesting related notes from Der Spiegel as well. Cocoa deficits forecast for the rest of 2012 and also the U.S. being vigilant in their fight against chocolate eggs. I assume that's kind of a holdover from uh, Easter stories. But, you know, this this is like the plunge protection team. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, uh, the most amazing thing about this story to me is that there's a a site called (laughs) confectionarynews.com. I I can't imagine checking that on a daily basis, but there you go. I'm glad someone is anyway. They they have a podcast, too, when they've gone to to recent, uh, you know, food expos. And just like, you know, I, I run the whole family of websites that cover different areas diving into all those areas you find those sites that are sort of you know dedicated to that kind of field and you know again sites i wouldn't necessarily go to every day but in the realm of food or in the realm of you know technology and you find these sites that are you know reporting things that are pretty massive but in a fairly nonchalant way so james will return to cryptagon again huge water resources exist under africa Scientists say the notoriously dry continent of Africa is sitting on a vast reservoir of groundwater. And I believe I have a related piece on Media Monarchy about, you know, mapping Africa, the the national geospatial, you know, military installation mapping Africa. And we've seen this on a number of levels. And you can make the argument that most wars are ultimately about the resources buried beneath. And water is going to be one of those key ones that is just more and more important as we get further into the 21st century. And on that note, of course, people can pass, cast their minds back to 2010. And the Christian Science Monitor had an article, Libya's Gaddafi taps fossil water to irrigate desert farms, talking about a 26-year, $20 billion project to tap an aquifer of fossil water underneath Libya to actually aquify the desert. And uh, and just an incredible project that was uh, just about nearing completion by the, when the uh, humanitarian love bombs started raining down. So just proving the point and proving that Africa actually does have immense water resources that have not yet been properly tapped. And, uh, and a, that's a warning, I think, to any leader out there that tries to do so without, you know, American NATO approval. Mm-hmm. James, there was a pretty large story in, in the last two days here about a mad cow outbreak from reuters this this being from a day or so ago the usda was holding a press conference on tuesday as rumors that a case of mad cow disease was discovered in california and it sent live cattle futures tumbling so some of the related updates and 
what I find really fascinating is most of the reporting you find concerning this, and there's things from the Chicago Tribune, Mad Cow cases in the U.S. and Canada, but from Reuters, the update from the next day, U.S. live cattle futures on Wednesday recovered most of the previous session's tumble, lifted by short covering and higher cash beef prices as traders attempted to put Tuesday's mad cow scare behind them. Traders said assurances by Japan, Mexico, and Canada that imports of beef would not be affected by the first case in six years of bovine spongiform encephalopathy popularly called Mad Cow, would support the market. All of the articles, all the stories, all seem to relate to, oh, well, this is going to be really tough for the market. Well, I mean, it, it certainly that's the first effect that everyone will see, and, uh, and that's exactly what happened in my home province of Alberta, Canada, which is a uh, sort of cattle, cattle farming area, and absolutely there was a, there was a case there last decade, and, uh, and it just completely, utterly destroyed the Alberta cattle farming market for a while there until uh, until eventually the ranchers were able to sell their, their uh, cattle again so it, it's it's absolutely not a good thing for the for the ranchers themselves and uh, no one likes to see this but uh, as the former premier of Alberta said well they should have just shot shoveled and shut up uh -huh. so uh, mm. absolutely and well and and of course the the real concern is well does this affect I mean how mu how much of this has gone on and how much has been quietly a uh, shot shoveled and shut up behind the scenes and you know it, it's all just optics so we'll see how it plays out but it can't be a good thing for the u.s uh, cattle ranchers hmm. james one last standalone post which will set us up to blast through the binge and purge from enviro reporter.com they were a guest on a show on nbc and g4 called attack of the show Media coverage of Fukushima Daiichi's multiple meltdowns and contamination of the Pacific Ocean and America's air, water, soil, food, and drink took a giant leap when Attack of the Show had the reporter from EnviroReporter.com on to discuss this gravest single environmental threat facing the world. Absolutely, and you have the 11-minute video, YouTube video linked up there mm -hmm. in the post, so I hope people will go check that out. Once again, foodworldorder.com is the place for all of these, and the notes with the links to each and every one of these stories will be at corbettreport.com slash radio shortly. And on that note, let's take a short break, and we'll finish up with the binge and purge right after the, these messages. <laughs> Corbett Report Radio on this beautiful night, friends. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, and we're joined, as always, on Thursday night by James Evan Pilato of FoodWorldOrder.com, and we're about to dive right into the Binge and Purge, the collection of all of the miscellaneous stories on the food, health, and environment circuit from the previous week, and enter at your own risk, my friends, because I just... I just, uh, out of <laughs> morbid curiosity, clicked on the link to the Man Creates Whopper with 1,050 Bacon Strips video. And uh, only in Japan, friends, only in Japan. But on that note, James, what, what do you uh, want to highlight from tonight's uh, uh, post? So this, this binge and purge again is, is, you know, partly thanks to my man Adam in Nova Scotia for helping out on Food World Order. Picked out, you know, a few of the highs and lows I've mentioned a few times before Oregon Senator Ron Wyden, and he's, you know, as you know, none of our politicians are our saviors, but pretty lucky. He's generally on the correct side of issues when it comes to food, when it comes to Internet privacy and all of those things. The Oregonian is reporting, and we also have a, a probably 10-minute video of him appearing on MSNBC to talk about Ron Wyden's nuclear field trip. Oregon Senator Ron Wyden's recent day-long field trip from Tokyo to the zone of Japan's nuclear devastation is worth at least worth at least a week in the telling. Bunny suited with a breathing device for protection against radiation exposure, Wyden walked through the ruined Fukushima Daiichi complex and saw what few from the West have seen, another bomb waiting to go off. 
James, the story goes on, but again, we provide links to our own Oregonian, also opednews.com, and again, straight to that YouTube clip on MSNBC. Any any brief words on Fukushima? Um, well, nothing really to say, absolutely. I just hope people are keeping their eye on it and are still uh, at least aware of what's going on there, especially Reactor 4, and it's uh, quite, you know, I mean, it's just a, a basically a sitting sitting duck there with its structural problems and sitting on so much nuclear fuel that we all just have to hope that nothing happens. And that's a pretty big thing to rest our hopes on. Mm -hmm. So quickly, I'll, I'll blast through the other ones from carolinajournal.com. State threatens to shut down nutritional blogger. Nutrition board says he needs a license to advocate dietary approaches. The North Carolina Board of Dietetics and Nutrition is threatening to send a blogger to jail for recounting publicly his battle against diabetes and encouraging others to follow his lifestyle. And, of course, it's at diabetes-warrior.net. Blamed for bee collapse, Monsanto buys leading bee research firm. It was called Bee Logics, and they bought them back in September 2001, of course, to get out in front of the fact that they caused the bee collapse. Courthousenews.com reporting USA and Kansas suing DuPont for toxic dumping. Fair, fairness and accuracy in reporting, and I got this from allgov.com. America Revealed, or is it PBS, a Dow chemical-sponsored public TV series tracks all the great new Dow product lines. Nestle to buy Pfizer's infant nutrition business, and we'll end with a drug war note. James, what do you think the chances if Obama gets reelected, he will end the war on drugs? I'm going to go with fat. That would be it. Fat chance. You are correct, sir. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, tons and tons and tons of information in that binge and purge, as always, and uh, tons of information every day on foodworldorder.com. Very quickly, what will you be covering on mediamonarchy.com tomorrow? Oh, my goodness. Probably a little bit of everything, but definitely singing the songs of uh, Anders Breivik in Norway and just all of the things going on around the world on an esoteric level. Absolutely. Well, looking forward to it, as always. James Evan Pilato, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, man. Okay, hey, that's going to do it for tonight, friends, and I will be back with you again tomorrow night, so 23 hours from now. Until then, thanks for listening and take care.